Lucy, you've played something very, very exciting that has been MIA for a really long time, recently came back. Um, you played Judas, mm -hmm. right? I did. So I went to Boston to visit Ghost Story Games mm -hmm. and I played five hours of Judas. Mm -hmm. And I just want to caveat up front, this is not a preview because no. the game is still, still has a lot, it's still in development, right. active development, things will be changing. And so what they were kind of calling it at the, at the studio is like a pre-preview. Uh, it's mostly just to kind of understand what the game is and right. what it's trying to do because I think everyone saw those initial trailers from mm. the Game Awards and were like, oh, it's Bioshock in space. Yeah. And to be reductive, that is the case. Yeah. But also they are doing so many cool things with it that it's also really not just Bioshock in space. Yeah. What kind of game is it? Are you still playing a narrative driven FPS or is there something more going on? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a narrative driven First person shooter. Okay. If you caught Ken's GDC talk, the infamous narrative Lego talk from years right. ago, where he was kind of bemoaning the fact that once you play a narrative game, that's it. You, you don't get anything new when you replay it. You might get like little things that you missed, but yeah. replay value um, is it's limited. Limited, yeah. So what they have is uh, implemented ways that the game is kind of always checking in and seeing what the player is doing and throwing you things um, like changes to narrative, right. choices that you make will have impact. Obviously, we didn't play the first five hours, okay. so it remains to be seen how those choices will impact the rest of the game okay. and how wide re and reaching they will be. So there's a, a changing narrative. Right. It's also uh, pseudo procedurally generated. So obviously by- The whole thing? Uh, the levels. So the levels, uh, okay. you, it takes place on the ship called the Mayflower. Okay. And instead of being a Rapture or a Columbia, which were these, you know, handcrafted completely, yeah. the way that the maps uh, populate in Judas is that they just have all these tiles and like different modules that come right. in and the game, you go, you definitely travel to different sections of the ship. Okay. And then they will kind of populate. Right. And then... The big thing? It's a roguelite. Okay. So I will not spoil the framing device for how it is a roguelite. Right. But let me just say, it's something that's very, very cool. Right. And I was actively, every time I was dying is because there's another narrative there. Okay. Every time you die, I was like, I really want to know right. what is moving ahead there. It seems like the narrative Lego part of it is being realized both in gameplay and the narrative part of it. Mm. It seems like likening it to something like Hades. Is that a fair comparison where it's the whole point is like when you die, you come back mm. and there's a fresh new uh, perspective or a color being added to the story. Is that how mm. it predominantly mm. plays out? Yes. So, I mean, Hades is definitely a touch point that the team mentioned when we spoke to them, right. but it's kind of deeper than that. And again, I don't want to spoil what right. the framing device or the thing is, but you are able to come back and you have, you can unlock an extra weapon slot or come okay. back because with um, one of the abilities um, or, you know, other things. In terms of the narrative itself, the way, and this is the thing, only, we played the first five hours mm. and then after maybe the first, the, the very opening of the game is very linear. You are on this ship, the Mayflower, you have done something, but you don't know what it right. exactly is that you've done. And everyone has tried to kind of, um, everyone has tried to escape or is dead. And there are these three, three leaders. So the whole, the whole purpose of the Mayflower is back on, back on earth, a plague wipes out most of the population, okay. a rich guy, you know, the, right. if you want to, if you want to be reductive again, the Andrew Ryan, the Comstock of yeah, it, yeah. um, the idealist is like, I would need to save humanity. I'm okay. going to burn all my resources and take people into space. Obviously stuff hits the fan. Yeah. And but in order to try and keep control on the ship, because obviously if you if the if the future of humanity is in your hands, you cannot just let humans do yeah. what humans are gonna do because they'll rip yeah. themselves apart anyway. So there are these three kind of leaders that were were put in by um uh by the guy who who's running the whole operation. Yeah. And uh one of them is is Tom, played by Troy Baker, the guy with the mustache, he's the the kind of sheriff. He just really believes in the mission of finding this new mm. golden world. There's Neff, who uh, was the doctor of the ship, who is now really jaded with the whole operation mm. and kind of believes that humanity maybe, I don't know, shouldn't be saved. And then there's Hope, and she kind of wants to push humanity and like creates matches and everything, mm. but she also kind of realizes that maybe this whole operation has not doomed been- Doomed to failure. Has been doomed to failure. Yeah. And so those three are really interesting because they're a family. So Tom and Neff were married and Hope is their adoptive daughter. Oh. But you, Basically, as Judas, you're trying to figure out what you did, how to, you know, not survive, but like figure figure out your place on this ship as it currently stands. And they all want different things, 
Hmm. And you basically have to adjust your standing with them because they'll offer you things. Right. And so this is the first couple of hours are very, very linear. You, you meet all of them. And then you get to the point where if I have done something with Tom, that might piss off Neff. Okay. And if I do enough of, I was doing a lot of Hope's missions actually. So I was doing a bunch of stuff with Hope. If you want to craft a certain thing or unlock a certain power, you can like pin those. And the game recognizes that that's what you're going for. Right. So what will happen is one of the other two will offer you something. Okay. So, you know, you don't just spend your whole time going down one track. The others will actively try and encourage you to do stuff for them. Or what they'll do, I was in the middle of a really tense firefight. In, in each level, they'll have one health station. Right. One use health station. Right. Or one one use ammo station. Okay. And I was really low and I was in the middle of this battle against all these robots and the enemy design is really cool. And they'll, they'll come up and they'll actively sabotage you. Oh. They'll break it in front of you or oh. they'll lock you in a room with enemies. Huh. That's interesting. And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> like, but it was, it was, and that's the thing, it's like, it's too early to tell what the ramifications are of, that. of you know, fully committing to one or, you know, ignoring one completely or pissing them off. But even kind of these immediate things were really cool to see. And right. so I'm really intrigued, definitely just, you know, scratch the surface of it. But. Yeah. Obviously, we have this Mayflower is the ship that mm -hmm. it takes place on, um, and the Bioshock games again a touch point. Um, mm. They're known for having a sense of place. Yes. Um, and that comes from, as you said, the finely you know handcrafted world. Mm -hmm. If this is procedural, does it still have that sense of place, or is, does it feel a bit more Lego-y? I, I mean, just as Rapture is a character, Columbia is its own character. I would I would say that the Mayflower certainly is too, and I think. One of the touch points that Ken brought up was um, things like so you've been publicly shamed. If you are the the one hope that humanity has, you cannot just let them run amok. You have to have a kind of controlled society where everyone is working towards the same goal. And that's why the character of Tom is like so intent on, you know, it's the mission this and the mission yeah. that. And in this society, there's kind of things like social credit. So if mm. you are really, um, you know, abiding by all the rules, you, that's that's currency. Right. Um, but Judas is the person who is not been abiding by the rules and her social credit is through the floor. And it, it even impacts in how you, how the, the levels look. So people who have really good social credit, I think they're called pilgrims. Oh. And then the other ones are just kind of like grotty, you know, even the areas. But in terms of a sense of place, there's all this, you know, like the fantastic like the posters and stuff from yeah, Bioshock, okay. like there have so many of Is those. Is that theme park vibe? Yes. Yeah, okay. um, like beautiful statues littering around and um, they have these really cool places. So one of the one of the sequences, and the reason I brought up like the social credit stuff is, one of the sequences is basically a public stoning, but they're hanging from these oh. um, thing, and but it's basically because they broke the rules and they're being lobbed with thumbs down, like, I don't know. Projectiles. Things. Yeah, yeah, projectiles. And so there's this element of, you know, everyone is kind of keeping the peace, but when people do deviate, you yeah. really, punished you really punish. Yeah. Um, but there are different, um, so you know how like in Bioshock you have, oh, we'll go to um, yeah. like the theater district or whatever. Yeah, essentially so they, biomes bio. or whatever. So they have those here. Uh, there's somewhere it's, oh God, the really creepy one was the kind of the nursery. So in, in the society, for example, uh, humans can't be trusted to raise their own children, so there are robots. And the robots are the, the main kind of enemy types. There are robots to help out with everything. There's a really terrifying one, for example, or the dentists. The dentist mm. chairs are a robot. Oh, that's, I don't which, like that. I'm not a fan of that. No, yeah, I think that's like the first kind of spooky moment that you have when there's a dead body on this chair. And, the, and it's a robot. And then, and then the robot stands up and tries to attack you, and there's, you know, there's chefs, there's... Okay. Um, the reason I bring up the... The nanny, uh, the the nursery is because there's the nanny robot, too, to look okay. after the kids, and the um, my favorite ones though are the horses. So Tom, Deputy Tom, hmm. has a bunch of horses as his deputy. Actual horses. Sher so Sheriff Tom has as horse robots. Oh, horse robots. And they look so weird, and they kind of <laughs> like use their neck and sneak around corners and stuff. So there is this really cool right. sense of. Style, right. but also like those enemies make sense. It's right. not just going to be endless okay. splices or whoever. Yeah. Gameplay wise, what other things can you do? Because obviously the Bioshock games and various other games, they had different ways to interact with the environment and mm -hmm. make progress. So is there anything else written there? Yes. So 
a gun in one hand, an ability in the other, mm. kind of is, is, is where you want to start. The thing that I really enjoyed is it kind of does this thing where it rewards you for experimentation and that's how Judas will have these kind of brainstorm moments mm. and will be like, oh, well, if I did this, maybe I will unlock another ability. And so then you kind of go around and it encourages you to try to do that thing again to fully, I don't know, Understand manifest yeah. the idea. So there's that. Similar with um, figuring out how to upgrade weapons, there's that. There is hacking. Oh. No pipes, though. I'm out. No pipes. The way that it basically works is that you select a target and you give it a, um, a thing to do. So it's an if this and that. Okay. And what you do, like these little hacking modules. So if I were to target the, these really creepy um, Cupid robots things okay. that fly. And so what you can do is you can you know hack it and be like, if uh, so, select that as the target, and then you can do things like kamikaze. You know, go okay. up and blow up yourself. Uh, near another enemy, or you can get it to socialize with something else, or you can get it to leak oil that then you can set on fire, or you can just get it to shut down. Yeah. So all these cool little ways of interacting. How do you actually hack it? You just hit Y, okay, and then uh, it's on the it's on the on the controller where it's like, okay, if I to select with one and select okay, with the other. So, so. Yeah, okay, you're just selecting it. That's cool. Yeah. And then there's um, there's no circus of values. Oh, that's a shame. There's no circus of values, but the the, the equivalent is this thing called the egg, and you can craft stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you can craft stuff in there. So obviously, one of the key marketable and recognizable things about the Bioshock games, and um, I keep coming back to Bioshock, but it's important to say like this is it's a, own it's thing. a very relevant it's a very touch relevant point. touch point. But obviously, they're known for having these one recognizable characters: the Big Daddy, the Songbird. Mm -hmm. Is there something like that in this game? So Big Daddy and Songbird, obviously these big protector characters. I would say the closest in what I played so far, there is a big robot dog. Oh. Called Scuttle. 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 And okay. so uh, Ken got a dog. Good for him. Uh, called Kirby. Great job. And um, apparently a lot of Scuttle's noises are like oh, okay. inspired by or even some recordings of Kirby. That's cool. But basically Judas is this character and also, I will. I just want to say. So obviously, in Bioshock, you never really see Jack's face, or and, no. and when you do see Booker's face, kind of towards a, the ending part of Infinite, it feels weird because you don't have that connection with him. Yeah. They do a really clever thing of always there's glass, so you frequently see Judas's face, and it does like connect you to her. Right. She's very brusque, I guess would be the word. Mm. She's not. Doesn't seem to have very many friends. She's very. You know, like just trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Yeah. Although she does have a robot dog, okay. and the first moment that you find out about that dog, she softens, mm. and um, so instead of having a bathosphere, as you did in Bioshock, to get from one place to another, you use the robot dog. Oh, okay. You get inside the dog. Oh, it's big enough that you can. It's big get enough. Inside you get inside it. his his big. Snake. Get in the dog, Judas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so remains to be seen if like if the, it will be any kind of protector or anything, mm. but I think just in terms of this big character who's always around cool. and apart. That's a new twist on it, because obviously yeah. like you technically, in Bioshock terms, you are now the little sister, mm -hmm. I guess, um, and you have a big daddy protecting yeah. you. Um, one thing I want to clarify there, you mentioned she, is, it, is the gender of the character locked? Is it? Yep. Okay, cool, that's yep. awesome. That's cool. I believe so. Interesting, um, so it seems like everything it both seems like unexpected what it is, mm -hmm. but also the things that we thought it'd be, but also kind of living up to what Ken promised with the narrative that goes. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like um, it's something new and fresh? Does it feel good to you? Like is something this is gonna be something that people will pay attention to and learn something from? I really hope so. I think it's a really interesting way to make a game, yeah. particularly like a game narrative. I, you know, We've seen in the past how very binary choices can play out mm. in things like Mass Effect. And I don't know how many endings this is gonna have, or like I've said multiple times, I don't know I don't I don't I don't know if I could kill one of the other yeah. the, the big three. You know, or what would happen there or how their stories play out and because it was so early. I think it, I think it's just really cool. I really wanna see I just kind of want to poke at the system. Yeah, it feels like it could be a, an immersive sim as well. Like mm. if you, if it has enough of that choice and consequence stuff. So yeah, it's very exciting. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you said it still feels very early, so I imagine they didn't give you an indication of when it's coming out. No, great. So um, we'll have to just 
hopefully get more information, hopefully it trickles out. But thank you so much for telling us about Judas. Um, very excited to see more. And hopefully we'll have more about it on GameSpot soon. Bye. Go away. <laughs>